Okay, you could get six ninths, but then you'd have to reduce that. If you simplify this, you know three goes into three one time, three goes into nine three times, and there that's going to give you the two thirds that you would reduce that six ninths into. Eleven to the two thirds power, and again we could write that as a root. This is a what type of root, folks? root of 11 squared. You just don't simplify the 11 to 121 and you just leave it like that? Uh, you, you could. You could do a cube root of 121, but that you can't go any further with that. Uh, so either way, I don't really care. I just want to make sure you're okay on getting at least this far and understanding that this can be written like that. That's really what I care about. Are you ready to move on? Okay, we're going to start combining some of these rules together. Uh, so that we're not just doing one. Here we've just done one rule like four times. Now we're going to start putting this all together. There's a nice looking one, huh? Yeah. That's what you like to wake up to in the morning. That's it, right there. Nice cup of coffee and some math. Best day. That's what you're going to do tomorrow, I bet. I don't think I'm going to do that tomorrow. So we have 3x to the negative 2 thirds to the third power and then x squared. First thing we're going to deal with is very much like order operations. You're going to get rid of any parentheses that you see. So we're not going to deal with this x squared until we deal with all this stuff up here. You with me on that? So let's deal with all that stuff up there. Now, going back to your rules, I want you to look at rule number three. Let's look at rule number three. On rule number three, it says, if I have some things, some, some terms, some factors being multiplied together inside of my parentheses and it's being raised to an exponent, each one of those factors gets raised to that exponent. Are you with me? Look, I want you to look what I have. What I have here is a product that's three times x to the negative two thirds. Are you with me? What this says to you is that each of those factors, since three is a factor and x to the negative two thirds is a factor, gets raised to that power. So what happens here is we don't just get a three back. We don't just get a three. Since it's being multiplied there, it says that the 3 is also getting raised to the third power. Are you with me on that? So what am I going to have it's instead of 3? I'm going to have 27, or 3 to the third. Now, how we do 3 to the third, I want you to think about this. We're not just arbitrarily raising a number to a third power. Please watch carefully on the board. This is 3 to the first power. Are you with me? So really, what you're doing, you're saying, oh, I have 3 to the first, 2 to the third. What's 1 times 3? That's how we're getting 3 to the third. Okay, that's how we're, we're doing it. We just say, oh, we're taking 2 to the third power. The product of those exponents still works for us. When you have an exponent raised to an exponent, we do multiply every single time. You just need to know that this 3 to the first power is also being raised to that exponent. That's how we're getting 3 to the third. Not sure if you're okay with that. Okay, that's good. Now, we do have something else in there that's being raised to the exponent. We have x to the negative 2 thirds to the third power. What are we going to do? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide those? What do you think? What do you think? We're definitely not going to add them, right? There's no common bases. We have an exponent raised to an exponent that says we're going to multiply those things. So here, we multiplied the 1 times 3. That was just the first power. We had 3 to the third. Now we're going to add x to the negative 2 thirds times 3. And of course, we're not even going to worry about that x squared so far. Okay, that's kind of a big step for a lot of people. I want you to really take a look at it. If there's questions, you need to let me know right now. Are you okay that we're going to have 3 to the third power, not just 3? Are you okay why we have 3 to the third power? Because the x one is 1, we're multiplying that times with 3, that's how we're getting 3 to the third. Are you okay that these two things need to be multiplied, and that's what we're getting here? Yes, no? Yes. All right. 
Does this simplify? Yeah. Yeah. How much are we going to have out of that? Yeah, those threes, those are gone. This is like three over one. We can simplify fractions like you, you were taught a long time ago. Uh, by the way, I'm going to leave this in terms of the power just so you can see this all the way down. You can write 27 if you want to. I'm just going to leave it 3 to the third for now. Just so you can see for that one step of that 3 to the third, uh, it, it's still there. I'm going to change it to 27 in the next step. Hey, is there anything else that I can do? I could. There's actually options here for you. You can do two things. You can do two things. Watch on the board. Since that's a negative exponent, you could move this to the denominator of the fraction. If you did that, what you would get is 3 cubed over x squared times x squared. Do you see where that x squared is coming from? That's this one. That's moving to the bottom. Remember, remember, this is multiplied, and we did we move that to the denominator. It's still going to be multiplied right here. If we move that to the bottom, it becomes a positive exponent. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. Then could you combine these? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's going to be x to the what? Four. Good. We add exponents for that. That's x to the fourth. Or you could think of it like this: you have three to the third. To combine these exponents, ignore that for a second. That's x to the negative 2 over x to the 2. How do you combine exponents when you're dividing common bases? Subtract. You'd have x to the negative 2 minus 2. You see where the minus 2 is coming from? That's, uh, what was that rule? Rule number? That's rule number 5. You're right. That would be rule number 5. It said you have common bases being divided. You subtract top exponent minus bottom exponent. How much is negative 2 minus 2? 3 cubed x to the negative 4. Is it going to work out the same? Which one do we move to the denominator? Do we have to move the 3 to the third? That's a positive exponent. Leave it. This is x to the negative 4. That one would move to the denominator. This would be 3 cubed over x to the 4. This one would be 3 cubed over x to the 4. Either way, you'd get the same answer on that. You have options on this stuff. There's not a right, there's not one right way to do it. These rules, you can do them in different orders, provided you stick with the exponent rules. They're fine. It's fine. You get rid of your parentheses first, and then we combine whatever we can. So when, when you move x negative 2 down, mm -hmm. you move the sign too? You, the sign of the exponent will change if you change it from a numerator to a denominator. That's the whole idea for rule number 7. Raise your hand if you're okay with this example. Good, okay, I'm gonna give you some to try. I'm gonna give you some simple ones to start with and then the last one I give you is gonna be pretty, pretty nasty. You ready for it? There's one. I definitely want you to be able to do those three with no problems. These are just the basic rules for us. This next one's going to take you some time. This is the one where I need you to get to ultimately, okay? If you can do this last one I'm about to give you, you're set already as far as the test goes on this idea. Okay, this is where I need you to be problem I'm about to put on the board.
you will have a problem like this one on your test. So work them out, work them out. So first three, no big deal, just kind of reviewing the excellent rules. Last one, big deal. Big deal, lots of stuff. But I think you're ready for it. I hope you're ready for it. Did you get y to the ten thirds on your paper for the first one? Yes. Or cube root of y to the ten? Add those. We get the eight plus the two. We have a common denominator already. We get ten thirds cube root of y to the ten. Yes, no? Yes. Good. Okay. Keep working on the last one. I'm going to do another one. Did you get to 5 to the negative 7 over 7? Mm -hmm. Can you reduce that? Negative 5 to the negative 1. 5 to the negative 1. We're not going to leave that, though. We don't want negative exponents up here. We're going to put this as what? Just 1 over 5. That's right. 1 over 5 to the first, or simply 1 over 5? Common bases. Mm -hmm. 